morning, everyone. Welcome to our Easter service. We're going to sing He Reigns. Center of unbroken praise, 
cause to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals, join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward. Victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward. In the triumph song of life. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. Christ is risen. Amen. He is alive today. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's so amazing to see how God had a big plan for us and showed us what we need to do, to earn that. Friday was amazing. We talk about the humanistic size of Jesus. But today we're going to talk about his glory, how he rose again and really show us things to do. Amen? Amen. And that, don't take my word for it. <laughs> take the scripture for it. Amen. And that's what we're going to look at right now. Amen? In Acts chapter 13, in verse 32, 37. But I said it up, Paul was speaking to us. And verse, in verse 26, he said, fellow children of Abraham and you God-fearing Gentiles. And it's us. It is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. So it's for each one of us here this morning that God sent this message. And this is the message that Paul is proclaiming. In Acts 13, verse 32, he says, we tell you the good news, what God promised our ancestors, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son. Today I have become your father. God raised him from the dead so that he will never be subject to decay. As God has said, I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is also stated elsewhere, you will not let your holy one see decay. Now, when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He, had, he was buried with his, his ancestors and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. Amen? Amen. And... Uh, that psalm that uh, Paul was referring to is really a predilection, a prediction of what to come. And I'm going to give the mic to my wife. By the way, I'm Boo, if you don't know me. And this is Kara, Kara Boo. You know, so, uh, and she's going to read that psalm to let us know that God's word is alive and well today. Amen. So in Psalm 16, uh, 5 through 10, uh, it says, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even at night. My heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. Amen. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with your joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. 
And I know that uh, on Good Friday, Tim really called us to think of Jesus' humanity and to ponder on it and reflect on that. And I was just thinking about this psalm. This is what Jesus went through. His heart was he had to, he had to believe and have faith that God would raise him from the dead and that he wouldn't be shaken. And every day, the, every day that he got closer to the cross, he had to rely on God. And, he, and this is a psalm kind of reflecting what he was going through. And I just started thinking about as, as we as a church, us two, every day we make a decision to go towards the cross, to look to the cross and know that our bodies one day will be raised with him. That's what it means. That's what today's about, a celebration of how God was ro rose from the dead. And we too one day from our dead bodies will raise to be with Christ. So I just want to encourage you with that, and just grateful to be here. Amen. We're gonna, we have a special service planned this morning. Uh, talk, uh, Tim, in a little bit here, will come up and share a communion message with us. And uh, before that, if you are planning on giving an offering, there is two chalices in the back by the, by the clock. Uh, make sure to put your contribution in there. And uh, for those who are giving online, you know, uh, you know what to do. And so with that said, let's go to God in prayer and then we continue with our service. Holy Father, we are so blessed. We are so grateful for your GPS, for your plan of salvation that you have for us. Thank you for Jesus coming on this earth, living a human life and dying on the cross for my sin, for your sin. Lord, I, we are so grateful that we get to celebrate this morning the rising and the resurrection and the life of our Lord Jesus Christ who is sitting at the right hand of the Father. I pray that our heart is to always be grateful, to always be thankful that you picked us to be your followers, to be your disciple. Thank you for what you continue doing in our lives every day. We love you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Right. Let's stand and sing. There's a peace I've come to know. Though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul. I can say. It is well, Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed, the victory is won, he is risen from the dead, and I will Victory. 
ready? If he's the one, show it, please. Show it that he's the one. Amen? Amen. All right, let's do it. Good morning. Welcome everyone once again to Heartland Church. Just grateful to be here on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Happy Easter. And let me get this mic situated here. Amen. It is always good to be together with the family, and uh, it is just family this morning, and uh, we're so grateful. If you're a guest with us this morning, we hope that you just feel right at home and feel part of the family, and if you didn't know already, uh, we have some refreshments in the fellowship hall out back, so make sure you get some of those. 
But um, I wanted to give you a, an Easter greeting this morning, a Resurrection Sunday greeting. And this is a, a greeting they use in Ukraine. So I know we've heard a lot about Ukraine lately in the news. And so I thought, well, let's give an Easter, a Ukrainian Easter greeting. So when I say Christ has risen, you're going to say Christ has risen indeed. Okay, so let's try this. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Okay, that's the easy part. Now we're going to do it in Ukrainian. <laughs> so I'm going to say, Christus vos kres. Okay? You don't have to say that. Don't worry. Yours is harder. Um, I'll say, Christus vos kres. And you're going to say, Vosinu vos kres. Okay? So, Vosinu vos kres. Vosinu vos kres. You got it? All right. So when I say, Christus vos kres. Christus vos kres? That's pretty good, pretty good. All right. Man, you guys are quick learners. All right, now we're going to do Portuguese. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> you know, every Sunday is really a celebration of Jesus. And I know this is a day that the world recognizes that Jesus rose from the dead, and, and we recognize that, but really every Sunday when we come together, Every Sunday when we take communion together, we, we take the bread and the cup, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Let me read from John 20, verse 1, just uh, one of the accounts of this resurrection. John 20, and verse 1 says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over, looked at the strips of linen laying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb, by the way, that other disciple is John, okay? Um, he's kind of referring to himself. Oh, the other guy that Jesus really loved, you know? Um, finally, it says, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now, Mary, this is Mary Magdalene, stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, she had, she had said, that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in his name. What an amazing time. 
What an amazing day that, that Mary and these brothers, they got to witness Jesus risen from the dead. Mary, she didn't even recognize him. I mean, imagine if you saw Jesus. You saw him on the cross. You saw him beaten and his body just disfigured. All the things that he went through on Good Friday. And then all of a sudden he's just standing there. You, you wouldn't believe it either. You'd be like, that's not, I, I saw what happened to Jesus. They, they couldn't believe it. And, you know, for us, I think we, we talked about this Friday, but we hear the story every year. We've heard it so many times. And I think it's so important that we go back and remember what really happened. There were so many witnesses. It says that, that many, many people, hundreds of people saw and witnessed the resurrected Jesus. You know, we talked about this verse on Friday night. For God so loved the world. Why did all this happen? Why, why are we here this morning? Why, why around the world this morning are people saying Christ has risen? Christ is risen indeed. Is it just so that we can have a, a social gathering? You know, is it just to get dressed up in our Easter best and pick out a new outfit? Is it just to have an egg hunt or get some candy for the kids? Now, those are all fun things, right? There's nothing wrong with those things, but, but if we forget why we're even here, why did Jesus even go to the cross? And this is the reason. For God so loved the world. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Do you ever wonder if God loves you? You know, maybe when we're at our low points in life and we're like, man, does anybody love me? How could anybody love me? You know, you ever feel those? I felt those things. We can feel those things. Even day to day sometimes things aren't going great or we make a mistake. You know, I even at one point I, I shared a little bit Friday night, just I was having a rough week and I shared with my wife. I was like, I can't do anything right. Because everything just seemed to be going wrong. And really what I was saying is, is God even listening? Is God even here right now? But we got to remember, for God so loved you that he gave his one and only son. And Friday night, as, as Boo mentioned, we talked about the humanity of Jesus. And it's easy to see Jesus as, as Lord and see Jesus as a risen Savior. But man, Jesus struggled he went through some things. It says the word became flesh and lived among us. He suffered as a man, and yet he overcame and did not sin. How can Jesus relate to our humanity, to our suffering, to our shame, to our joy, to our human experience? You know, during Jesus' arrest and crucifixion and all the events that happen on Good Friday... We, we can look at his disciples, that they all ran away from him, and Peter denied him, and we could be like, well, I wouldn't have done that, you know. I'd have been the guy that stood there with Jesus, right? I would have stayed till the end, and it's like, no, no, we wouldn't have. <laughs> we would have been the first one out probably, right, <laughs> if we're honest. But his disciples, they gave in to their fears, their sinful thoughts, their faithlessness. You know, and this week I shared about Friday, just, just some of the struggles that I had and the doubts that I had and fears of things not working out, situations I was dealing with, and just faithlessness. And you know what? In nearly every one of the situations where I was faithless, God came through. And, and I think that's just true so many times. That, that doesn't mean everything always works out, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that just aren't going to work out the way we want them to. But in the end, God comes through. Sometimes not even in this life, but, but you got to know, in the end, God will come through. He always comes through. Maybe not always when we expect him to, but you know what? God's timing is perfect. And I think oftentimes our trials and our sufferings, the things that we're going through, that our frustrations, those are opportunities for God to be glorified. You know, when Jesus was suffering on the cross, that was an opportunity that God was going to be glorified through. E even Peter, 
denying Jesus three times, and then later we see Jesus reinstating Peter. Peter, like, has the keys of the kingdom, opens up the door for the modern church. Even that is God being glorified. Jesus' suffering led to glory. His death resulted in him being raised from the dead. He couldn't have been raised from the dead had he not died. His pain and suffering resulted in him being glorified. His resurrection and his resurrected life resulted in our salvation, our promise of eternal life. And as we see here in John 3, 17, it says, God did not send his son to condemn the world, but to save the world through it. You know, I think sometimes in our minds, maybe it's because of our religious upbringing or maybe lack of religious upbringing, maybe because of experiences we've had even in church, we, we start to think that God, that Jesus wants to condemn us. Jesus doesn't want to condemn you. He wants to save you. That's not why he came. And we can get it twisted. You know, I felt so foolish this week after God came through and just one situation after another after another and, and in ways that I couldn't have even imagined God just came through, and, you know, I started asking myself, why did I doubt? I've been down this road before. Why didn't I have more faith? Why didn't I trust God more? And I think, man, I, I sound a lot like Jesus, guys, a lot like Jesus' disciples. You know, I mentioned uh, Jesus reinstating Peter and if you look later in the, in the last chapter of John, Jesus and Peter sit down and they have this encounter. And Jesus asks him three times, do you love me? And, of course, Peter denied Jesus three times. So I think it's purposeful that he asked him three times. He says, do you love me? And every time Peter was like, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. He asked him again, do you love me, Simon, son of Jonah? He says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus says, feed my lambs. He asks him a third time. And I got to bet that third time, Peter was hearing the rooster crow again. He was hurt, it says, that Jesus asked him a third time. But you know, Peter's sin, his struggle, and then his repentance led to God being glorified. God sent Jesus so that we might have eternal life. But let's look a little bit deeper into what does that mean? What does it mean to really live our life now and eternal life for Jesus? In John 1, verse 9 through 13, it says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Of course, that's Jesus. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name... He gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. You know, he talks here, he says that, that Jesus came into the world. He was the true light, and he gave us something. What does it say he gave us? The right to become children of God. Now, does that mean that everybody is a child of God? No, but, but he says you have the right to become a child of God. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a little story here, and it kind of dating myself, but maybe some of you uh, folks that are my age or older will remember this. But I used to go to some concerts when I was younger, right? And this was before the Internet. But you couldn't just go online and click a button and get tickets. You actually had to go buy tickets, like in person, at a place. You had to pay them the money, and you get your tickets. But if it was a really popular content, or concert, people would camp out for like days and days beforehand. And so they started coming up with this system because they didn't want people like, you know, people are messy and you leave your trash and all that. So they're like, yeah, we're not doing that. So they started giving you a line ticket, right? And that was just a ticket for your place in line. It wasn't tickets to the concert. It was just a line ticket. But that line ticket gave you the right to then buy your tickets. It gave you a place in line. And you see, when Jesus came to this earth, he gave you that line ticket. Everybody on this planet has a place in line that they can go and redeem that and have eternal life. Have you claimed your ticket this morning? 
Or are you just still holding on to the line ticket? Like, I got, I've got the right to do it. But have you claimed eternal life in Jesus? I want to encourage you. If, if you're not sure or if you haven't punched that line ticket yet to get eternal life in Jesus, if you haven't made Jesus Lord, don't let another Easter come and go. Make a decision today. Hey, I, it might take me a few days, a few weeks, whatever, but I am going to pursue this. I'm going to study out the scriptures and, and claim what Jesus came to give me. Or perhaps you've already done that. Perhaps you've made Jesus Lord. You're like, yeah, 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 that's great. I already claimed my ticket. I, I had the line ticket. I cashed it in. I've made Jesus Lord. I've received that salvation. Well, then what? Is that it? Is it like, okay, now I'm just going to coast till the end? You know, just going to kind of float through life, you know, don't worry about anything. It, maybe it, it's, oh, I'll just go to church every week, you know, every now and then. Maybe a few times a year, Christmas, Easter, right? Because I'm saved. I got it. Is it just to become religious or maybe even self-righteous? You know, we, we got our tickets, and so we start to look at people that maybe don't have it, and, and we think, oh, I'm, I'm better. We wouldn't say that, right? But, but is it just to become religious or self-righteous? No. If that's where our faith is, that, that it's just about coming to church, just kind of holding on to that ticket to the last day, what we're missing out. Because it's so much more that Jesus wants us to do. It's not simply being religious. It's not simply being a churchgoer. And it definitely isn't being self-righteous. Let's look at a few more scriptures. And I think these scriptures are going to help us this morning. Because, you know, Peter saw what happened to Jesus. Mary Magdalene, they saw. They saw the death, the burial, the resurrection. And it changed them. And if we're not changed by the cross, if we're not changed by the resurrection, then, then we're not really getting it. But here's the good news. is It's not too late, right? We can, we can get it. We can start to get it right now, today. Look at 1 John 3.16. I think they didn't have the verses in the Bible, the numbers or whatever, but I think it's really cool how this lines up with John 3.16. This is a letter that John wrote years and de decades later. But look what he says in 1 John 3, 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Man, that's awesome, right? That's what we've been talking about. Jesus laid down his life for us. And, and we love that, right? And, and we could just stop right there. Let's just stop right there. Or we can read the rest of the verse. Let's read the rest of the verse. <laughs> this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Do, do we really know what love is? He tells us right here. This is how we know what love is. Remember that song? I want to know what love is. We're not talking about that. Um, <laughs> how do we really know what love is? It says Jesus laid down his life for us. And if, if someone today physically laid their life down for you, how grateful would you be? That they stepped in front of the bullet they pushed you out of the car, out of the way of the car and took the, the hit for you. Man, you would never forget. You, you would do whatever you could for that person, their family. If they laid down their life for you, you'd be like, man, that, I'm forever indebted. Jesus says, this is how we know what love is. He laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. That's real love. Not just words but sacrifice, commitment, selfless. You know, and think about when, when you think about Easter, when you think about the resurrection, when you think about Jesus' death, is, is your response, hey, how can I go and lay my life down for others? Or is it just like, man, that was awesome. I feel really good. God loves me so much. Now let me just take all that love and hold on to it. Jesus says, no, you've you got to lay it down for others. And I think it's sad in, in the world today, in, in Christianity at large, and, and maybe even for us at times, it, it becomes much about self. You know, I was talking with, with some people recently, and 
We, in the church, we have relationships where we get together, we disciple one another and help one another. And, and sometimes it just becomes all about us. And, hey, can I tell you what I'm going through and what I'm feeling? And, and it's just very self-focused. And Jesus says, that's not love. That's not it, guys. The whole point of being a disciple now is to lay our lives down for others. It's got to be more about we than about me. So think about your Christian walk. How much is it about we versus about me? And I don't mean me, like, but you. <laughs> and we all need a personal relationship with God, okay? I'm not diminishing that at all. Don't, don't hear that. Oh, we don't need to spend any time with God on our own. We need that, right? That's how we get recharged and refreshed and renewed. We have that personal connection. But then how we live it out is that we're part of the body of Christ. Let's read more about this in 1 John 4 and verse 7. It says, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Here John says, love comes from God. That's where it comes from. And he said, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. You know what, if, if we don't love one another we can't truly know and love God. We can say we do. We can even think we do. We can really believe it. But, but the scriptures say if we don't love God, I mean, if we don't love others, we don't really know God. We just learned what is love according to God. It's laying our lives down for our brothers and sisters. It's not warm, fuzzy feelings. It's not loving people from a distance. You know, I love people as long as they stay over there. Ever feel that way? I can felt that way before. Right? I love people. Just keep them away from me. You know, that's not love. Love is not just putting a love a heart on their Facebook posts or resharing their. That's not that. That can be love, right? But it's got to go deeper than that. Here he describes love. He says God sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That's how much God loved us. I think I can do more than click a like button. He says, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This word ought that he uses here, it doesn't mean like oughta, like well, I ought to do it, but you know, if I don't, it, it means like should, must, really is a better, better uh, description there. He says, so we must love one another. And then towards the end of this passage, he says, if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. If, if we want God to live in us, his Holy Spirit live in us, he says we must love one another. Amen. Worshiping God is not a solo adventure. You know, I love to go out in the woods or out on the lake or get out in nature, right? I took Ivan and Simon out yesterday. We went out in the woods and looked for some coyotes, which never came along. But we had fun, right, guys? But I love to get away, right? That's good. But, but Christianity is not about just getting away from it all. It, it, it's a team sport. It's a community. Amen. Worshiping God is not a solo adventure. Being a disciple of Jesus is not a solo adventure. And, you know, sometimes I think because of our hurts, and, and they're legitimate hurts. I'm not diminishing our hurts, right? we got to work through those. But, but I've heard this said, and, and I've even felt this at times. I, just want, I don't want anything to do with the people. I just want God. Right? You ever, ever felt that? Ever heard that? Ever said that? I, I get it. I don't diminish how we may feel. But Jesus said it's all about loving one another. And you know what? That gets messy. Loving one another gets really messy. They, they say the people that, that you love the most are the people that are going to hurt you the most, right? Because you're around them the most, right? 
the guy down at Casey's, I don't even know him. He's not going to hurt me. But the people that I'm around, you know, JoJo is probably going to hurt me. It's no offense, JoJo, but, you know, he'll probably hurt me one day because I'm around JoJo. I'll hurt him, right? It's messy business because, you know what, we're all sinners. <laughs> That's the problem with the church is it's full of sinners. If there weren't any sinners in here, we wouldn't have any problems, Right? Then it'd just be Jesus sitting here all day by himself. But that's not the point. So it's going to be messy. We're going to sin against one another. We're going to hurt one another. We're going to have to learn to forgive one another. We have to lay our lives down for one another. You know, I've looked in the scriptures, and and I've I've read the Bible numerous times, and I've never found the opt-out scriptures on these things, right? Right? I've never seen like, you got to love one another unless they say this to you. You need to lay your life down for your brothers and sisters unless they hurt you again. And then you're you're out. You know, you got to pass on that one. No, there's no opt out scriptures. When someone hurts me, when someone doesn't respond the way that I wanted them to. Well, but I'm an introvert, so I can't do what somebody else could do you know there's no opt-out scripture now maybe they're going to be better at some things than you are right i'm naturally i've shared this before i'm naturally an introvert i am i'd I'd rather just be kind of over in the corner by myself you know if i was at a party in middle school or so i was the guy on the wall right (laughs) i wasn't out there like amanda would have been or whatever i'm on the wall right with jamin we're over there (laughs) but there's no opt-out of the call to lay our lives down and to love one another. Let's read a little bit more here in 1 John 4, verse 13. He says, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Wow. The guy that laid his life down for us. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love Because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Wow. There's a lot in there, right? Just talking about Jesus, talking about his love and and, and again, we love the flowery parts, the, the gushy parts, but, but then he just keeps bringing it back to this same point about you have to love your brothers and sisters. And, and I don't know why he says it so many times. My guess is because we can be thick-headed, right? Well, he only said that once, so that's not as important as those other things. He, he says it a lot, right? And this is just one passage. You can find this over and over and over in the scriptures. But God's serious, Whoever claims to love God yet hates, in verse 19, yet hates a brother or sister is justified because they've been sinned against. (laughs) Wrong answer, right? Survey says. Now, if we claim to love God and yet hate our brother and sister, he says, you are a liar. That's not me, okay? That's, That's God saying it. That's pretty direct. And, and the, it all boils down to this. If we don't love one another, we can't love God. Well, I love God, just don't like these people. <laughs> I don't like that guy or that lady. You know, no, we, we can't do that. Here's the thing. God doesn't need anything from us, right? It's not like, oh, I'm going to take God a meal tonight or I'm going to, you know, forgive God. Or, you don't need to forgive him because he hasn't done anything wrong, right? I'm going to go and, and mow God's lawn, or I'm going to do this or that. God doesn't need anything. But he says, but my people do. Your, your brothers and sisters need you to love them. And that's how we love God. For God 
so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. You know, this Easter, this Resurrection Sunday, don't let it just be another one that comes and goes. Let this be a time that changes us. What is our response to this verse? For God so loved the world. Because what God says is, if, if you love me, you will love your brothers and sisters. You will lay your life down for your brothers and sisters. At this time, we're going to take communion together. And as, as we have the bread and the juice, let's really reflect on this. Let's really reflect on and be grateful for how much God loves you. If you haven't made Jesus Lord of your life, again, I want to encourage you, make a decision today. Talk to somebody here. If you, if you know someone here, get in the Bible. Find out what does that mean to, to have that relationship with God. Make a decision today. And if you've already done that, are you loving your brothers and sisters by laying your life down for them? Make a decision today that this will be how we live as the body of Christ. Amen? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day. God, we thank you so much that this is a day that the entire world just stops and recognizes what Jesus did on the cross. And, and not just that he died and that he was buried, that he, he paid the price for our sins, but that he was raised again from the dead. And God, just as Jesus was raised again, when, when we die in the waters of baptism, when we're raised again to live a new life, God, we don't want to just, just come to church. We don't want to just fill a pew on a Sunday or come on Christmas and Easter. God, we want to then live a resurrected life for you. That means loving one another, God. It, it's so challenging at times. I, I can imagine as Jesus was dying and he forgave the men who were dividing up his clothes, he said, they don't know what they're doing. I can imagine that was challenging for Jesus to forgive in that moment. God, and sometimes in our humanity, it's challenging for us to forgive. It's challenging for us to lay our lives down in different situations. But God, you're going to provide for us. You're going to meet our needs and and maybe some things in this life won't happen, but God, we know eternally you're going to meet our needs, and it's going to be amazing. But right now you've called us to lay our lives down and to love one another, and we want to do that. God, as we take the bread and the cup this morning, I pray that we can reflect on these things and be grateful for Jesus' body that was broken for us, and that we make a decision that we'll, we'll allow ourselves to be broken for others. God, that, that we're grateful for Jesus' blood that was poured out, God, and that we're willing to pour ourselves out for our brothers and sisters to, to truly live like Jesus lived. But God, we love you. We thank you for this day. Thank you for all the fun and the festivities and the meals that happened today. But God, we, we thank you most of all for your son, Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen. If you did not get a cup for communion, just raise your hand and the ushers will come around and bring you one.
it's been a great service, and I've loved just worshiping with all of you. I'm so grateful for every face that's here today. Um, I do have a few announcements and updates uh, of things going on, and then Danielle is going to explain the egg hunt before we have our last song, uh, which I know all the kids are super excited for, I am sure. So, um, just a few things. This midweek will be our, in the small groups. So, if you came out with a friend today, you can ask them where your small group's meeting this week. Your family group will meet. Um, but we're meeting in family groups for midweeks this week on Wednesday or whatever night your group meets. Um, and then... Special Missions is coming up, so we'll talk more about that, but our Special Missions offering uh, will for the Eurasian, Eurasian churches will be on May 15th, but before that, we actually have our church-wide garage sale will be on Saturday, May 14th, that will raise money to go to Special Missions, so please mark your calendars. That uh, date was just decided on. The actual um, community here in Tawnytown does a um, citywide garage sale that weekend, where they give a map to everybody who's doing a garage sale. So it's a big deal in this area, and we'll do our churchwide garage sale on the 14th. So start going through your stuff. Spring cleaning time is here. So uh, just pull it out, set it aside, and we'll get more details to you later. But mark your calendar for May 14th. Um, on Thursday, April 21st, so this coming week, there is um, a global day of prayer and fasting again for Ukraine, um, just for peace in Ukraine. So um, there are still daily prayer time updates going on globally at 1 o'clock every day. You can log on to the Facebook and see that. Uh, kids, Heartland Kids Camp and Heartland Youth Camp registration is open for both of those. So parents, an important date that you want to know is May 1st. That's when the early bird registration ends. So the cheaper price <laughs> will end on May 1st, but you have until May 22nd to get registered for Heartland Kids Camp. That's second through fifth graders, incoming second through fifth graders. And Heartland Youth Camp is sixth through twelfth graders. So please get your kids registered. Camp is always so much fun. We all have a great time, um, and it's a great week to be there. So all of that information is on your announcement sheet. And then I did want to... Um, point out a prayer request. So Janetta Tobias, she fell a couple days ago in her backyard and her face took the brunt of that fall. She has a severe concussion. So if you could please pray for Janetta. She is okay. There's no fractures, but just keep her in your prayer because she has a lot of um, side effects from that concussion happening. So if you know her, please reach out to her, send her some love. Um, and I just wanted that it's added here, but I just made aware of that last night. So please pray for her. And now, Danielle has a lot of instructions before our last song. <laughs> All right, good morning. Um, so, kiddos, this is for you guys. Who's excited? Nobody? Oh, okay, okay. All right, so you guys have done really good. My kids, I don't, I mean, I didn't hear anybody else really throwing a fit. So, now you get the joy of Easter egg hunting. Um, so when we're done, you're going to meet in the little foyer there. Mr. Brandon is going to help you divide up into age groups. We've got some helpers outside helping the Easter Bunny hide eggs. And then you will go out by age group. You will go out by age group and you will hunt 12 eggs. We have over 800 eggs that were out there. So everybody will have enough. But we're going to start with 12. Then as everybody finds what they need, we will let the preteen and the teens get to hunt this time. We'll see how it goes in the future. No, I'm just teasing. Um, but you will get to hunt. And then after that, everybody will go out again, and it will be a free-for-all. So, yeah. No knocking anybody down. This is not battle royale. You know, this is not we're going to take each other out. So, anyway. That's Mr. Brandon will be the one that you want to see after service. Yeah, no full contact Easter egg hunts this weekend, okay? Uh, well, let's stand. We're going to sing a closing song. Words are pretty easy on this one. Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 let the brother sing, amen, good Lordy, amen, have mercy, amen, amen, amen. see the little baby, 
lying in the manger. Early in the morning. Amen. 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 In the temple. Teaching all the elders. Oh, how they marveled at his wisdom. Amen. 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 Hey, we'll see him at the seaside. Preaching and a healing. But to the blind and the feeble. Amen. 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 We'll let the sister sing. Amen. Sing it over. Amen. Sing it over. Amen. Amen. Hey, we'll see him in the garden. Praying to the Father. In deepest sorrow. Amen. Amen. He will see him there with Pilate. Pilate gave a choice now. Oh, but we chose Barabbas. Amen. Amen. He will see him bear the cross now. Up to Calvary, Amen. oh, where they Amen. crucified my Lord. Amen. 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 He will see the empty tomb now. Amen. Christ has arisen. Amen. Oh, and he lives Amen. with us today. the brother sing amen good lord amen have mercy amen 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 we'll let the sister sing amen sing it over amen sing it over Will everybody sing? Amen. Amen. Sing it over. Amen. 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 Kids, go ahead and head out for the egg hunt into the foyer.